quite the spectacle um, at CPAC. I wonder what it tells you about his continued influence on the party, given that both he got the sort of response he wanted from that crowd. He also repelled people who refused to go to CPAC because they didn't want to be a part of it. Well, it's just, in spite of all the vulnerabilities that we have said Donald Trump has, he still is in a better position this year than he was in 2015 when he ran for president, won the nomination, and won the election in that year. He's, he's far more, very much more popular among Republicans. He's more dominant, obviously. CPAC has become him, his, his group, as we saw in there. And he's lead in the polls over the next challenger. This time around, is much higher than them. I, I think what, what I think is fascinating to me is that the two leading candidates, Donald Trump and DeSantis, are probably the most mean-spirited, cruel, divisive candidates and who operate on a, on a way of grievance than any of the candidates. So the party is actually fairly united behind that kind of candidate. The only dispute they seem to have is who can win the general election. Yes. That seems yes. to be the only difference they have between the candidates they want to support and the ones they don't. Right, is why DeSantis has become Trump, Trumpism without some of the legal issues. And then actually he's arguing that he can be electable. I completely agree with that analysis. Paul, it, it strikes me, Trump says a lot of ridiculous things. He vowed he wouldn't let any indictments stop him from running for president in 2024. I mean, is that just because he will need to continue fundraising if he's indicted? Is it just sort of the absurdest type of thing that he says? I wonder, I wonder what you made of those comments. You know, Alicia, when I was a public corruption prosecutor for the Department of Justice, it was very common for politicians to say that they would run for re-election regardless of our case. But this is the first time a former president has faced that possibility. The Constitution only has three requirements for who can be president. You have to be born in the U.S., you have to be at least 35, and you have to have lived in the country for at least 14 years. Way back in 1920, Eugene Debs ran for president while he was actually serving a prison sentence. He got almost a million votes. Debs said it, if he had won, he would pardon himself. And Alicia, that's just one of many constitutional issues that could present itself if Trump ends up winning in 2024. So many, so many issues. Uh, Matt, I, I'm struck because it, it's easy for me to get sort of lost in the sauce on, on the politics of this. I was also struck by some of the foreign policy messaging that we saw at CPAC. You had speakers bashing Ukraine, I mean, bordering on pro-Russian propaganda. The election denying former president of Brazil was a key speaker, a noted speaker. What does it tell you about today's GOP that this is what they are showcasing at a prominent event? What tells me two things, one to carry on what something that Paul said, that being a criminal or being a potential criminal is no downside in the Republican Party today. So the fact that Donald Trump is leading all the polls and he has all these potential lawsuits and p potential criminal behavior, that doesn't seem to be any downside. The second part of this, which is you and I have had this conversation, it reinforces the idea that they don't care if you abandon democracy and support autocracy, as long as you accomplish what they want to accomplish, which is to satisfy their grievance or to satisfy revenge on a certain segment of, of the population. They have completely abandoned the idea the president is supposed to protect and defend democracy, mm -hmm. and they would just as soon pick anybody. It doesn't matter the means for which you get it, it including throwing away our constitutional system of democracy if they get to the end they want, which is their person in office, to satisfy all the grievances they have. 